things that we need to get into in building a golf swing is learning how to properly film because let's be honest, film is the ultimate judge, right? I mean, if you have three judges, you have what's a ball flight do, how's the swing feel, or what does it look like? Who is the judge in the room that is the ultimate judge to tell you whether or not you're actually doing something? Well, I don't know about you, but I have seen some players who have really bad golf swing hit good shots. So obviously the ball flight is not the ultimate guide. I have worked on my golf swing to where I felt like I was doing something and then I looked on video and I'm like, wow, that is not at all what I'm doing. So obviously how it feels is not the judge. The true judge is the video. It's kind of like that old adage. It says like, hey, the camera adds 10 pounds. No, that's just how you actually look, right? So we need to make sure that when you are practicing, you're filming. See, when I would go <clears throat> and I was playing professional golf, there was these bags at TBC Scottsdale. And at TBC Scottsdale, these bags of balls hold, hold about 30 balls per bag, 35 balls. I would go through two of these bags in two hours. So it took me two hours to hit 70 balls. Now the reason that was, was because of the fact that I was swinging, filming. Filming, like filming and then swinging. Filming and then swinging. Filming and then swinging. Because I wanted to make sure that every single rep counted. A person who is making a swing where the swing is wrong is really of no value. You're just like a golf ball whacker guy. You want to make sure that every rep counts and that the swing that you're performing is the true swing that you want. So let's take a minute and just tell you how to actually set up proper film. Because quite frankly, where you set up your camera can have a dramatic impact on what the club looks like in the frame. So when you're setting up, we wanna make sure that the camera, you can see that this camera is about the, the height of my hands. It needs to be about 28 to 32 inches off the ground based upon your height. The second thing is you wanna make sure that when you're filming, the camera is on your hand line. So you can see that in the frame, my hands are perfectly in the center of the camera. This allows so that when I make a perfect backswing, the club head would cover my hands. Whereas if I was, had an improper spot and I was setting up like this, the club would appear to be inside. And if I was this way and I was too far out, the club would appear to be outside. So the placement of the camera is really, really important. So from this down the line view, we wanna have the club head once again covering, like we wanna have our hands covering the middle of the camera so that as I go back, essentially the club head would cover my hands. And we'll talk a little bit more about what to look for in this down the line view. And then from the face on, it's simply the same thing. We wanna have our body in the center of the frame so that the camera is the same height as, <clears throat> as like your hands are in the picture. And then this allows us to see whether or not we're swaying or if our head is moving or where our body is moving. So the placement of the camera is really important. Now, you don't have to necessarily have a tripod like the camera right now is sitting on a tripod. Tripod. You can also do what I did and you can simply just use your golf bag. Your golf bag happens to be like the perfect height to film a golf swing. And all you have to do is take your phone, put it in there, let it balance, and voila, you now have a tripod. And if you don't have a tripod, the other thing that's cool is you know those little things that, those little caddy things that are at the back of the ranges that hold balls, they're also 28 to 32 inches. So I would also do that where I would like maybe take my range finder and I would put it on top and I could put it on the little shelf and then fill my swing there. So there is a plethora of ways. There's things where they sell little cam caddy things where you can put an alignment stick and it like holds the camera. There is a mountain of ways to film your swing. And the truth is, is that your swing is your swing. It doesn't matter whether you're on a tee box, a range, your basement, your backyard, your kitchen, it doesn't matter, your swing is your swing. So now you can film your swing wherever and because of some of the programs that we have in place at the Golf Room Everywhere, such as the Stock Shot Club, where you can send your video and then we give you basically unlimited feedback in the comfort of your own home in minutes where you can send us your video and then we tell you what you need to do to get better, there's no excuse to not get better, right? We have to use film and that has to be our guide. So now 
what do we need to actually look at in video and how do we know what the picture should look like, right? Because we need to establish essentially a doctrine or a philosophy to where you know what is truth. What should the club actually do, right? So let's kind of take a dive into the video and see what it is that a true golf swing that's built around physics and efficiency that hits a stock shot, a consistent ball flight, what does that actually look like? When you're setting up and you can kind of see that both of them have the camera in the same spot right on their hand line, I'm going to draw a line up the shaft. Now this line signifies what's called as the swing plane, right? And then I'm going to draw a line on the hands, right? So this line signifies depth. Now we agree that in a backswing there is a turn. So everybody is turning in their backswing and the turn is what's going to make the hands work this direction, right? The hands are going to work towards the inside. So as Zach Johnson is going back, the first thing we're looking for is as he turns, his hands will be working in and the club head is just barely covering his hands. And if we look at Rory, we can see the same thing will happen to where his hands are working in and the club is on the plane. Now, when the club were to look too far under the line, most times that is because the player is not hinging their wrists enough. Hinging meaning if Rory or Zach were set up at like moving the club in an up and down fashion towards the builder hat. That is called vertically hinging and that's what we want to be doing in the backswing. We want to be tilting, turning, and hinging. So we want to have the hands kind of working in, barely kissing your thigh, and the club head covering your hands. Right? That would be one important frame that you would see in the video. The second one would be halfway back your left arm or your lead arm is splitting your elbow and your shoulder. So you can see his left arm is parallel to the ground. His hands are splitting his, his elbow and shoulder, so essentially between his, at his bicep. And then the club is looking slightly inside the ball because all players essentially that you'll see, the club halfway back is looking at the ball or slightly inside. That is what we call steep because everybody's swing that we find to be really aesthetically pleasing, it follows this steep, shallow, steep program. So he's a little bit steep with the backswing, hand splitting the bicep, and you can see that Rory is going to be in the same exact spot. And that's the cool part is that when you start looking at all of these tour models, there are similarities between everyone, which is why you look at players like Rory and Zach and Justin Rose and Tommy Fleet when you go, man, that swing looks really good. That's because the symmetry of what you're seeing. So now a third point is that at the top, we want to have, if I kind of erase some of these lines, you can see that his left arm is going to be matching his shoulders. Rory will be the same exact way. So now his left arm is matching his shoulders, which is 90 degrees to his spine. 90 degrees to his spine. And if you were to draw a line down from the hands, they would be above the heels, right? So that would be another symmetrical spot to where if you wanted to have a face angle as well that was square, you can see that Rory's kind of matches his left arm. Zach Johnson's is a little bit more shut, so the grooves are looking towards the sky. And then the club is in on plane. So when it's on plane, if you were to draw a line from the ball to the grip to the shaft, it's on one line. And then if you were to come up from the heels, basically we want to have the club sit somewhere in this triangle. This is like the triangle of friendship. So this actually makes the club be on plane at the top, right? So that's kind of like the boundary in which we want the club. If the club was over here, it'd maybe be a little across the line. If it was over here, it'd be a little laid off. So that's the top. So those are kind of some spots that we could look for in the backswing to make sure that our backswing is on plane when we're filming our swing. Now, the fastest distance between two points is a straight line. So to shallow the club, as you've probably seen or you will see in a lot of our videos, it's not very difficult. All we have to do is essentially now shift our weight towards the target and then drive our arms at the ball. So you can see that Zach is just lowering his arms, right? So his arms went up, now they're coming back down and then that allows the shaft to go back on this original plane line. So you can see that at the setup, right, he's going back. Now the club comes back down and it's on the plane line kind of through his forearm. And essentially the shaft is 90 degrees to his spine. And you're gonna see Rory's gonna do the same thing. So like there's the plane, you're gonna see how he's gonna be shifting towards the target 
and then lowering his arms, and now the club comes right back on the plane. Most amateurs, they have the club like this. That would be what's deemed steep. So you can see that Rory went back a little steep with the backswing, but then coming down, the club looks outside the ball, which is shallow. It was the same with Zach, right? He went back a little steep, and now he comes down, and you can see now the shaft is looking a little outside the ball, so now it's shallow, so he goes steep to shallow. So now both of the players are shallow. You can see Rory's actually maybe a smidgen more shallow than Zach, right? And now they have freedom to turn as quickly as they can, right? So now they can turn and control the face so that the shaft looks back inside the ball. So that's steep, and you can see how he's kind of maintaining his posture, right? Rory's going to do the same thing. He's going to turn now through the ball, and the club kind of looks back inside the target line. So now it's steep again. So kind of summarizing, as you're looking at this on video, right, hands should work in and clubs should cover hands. Then we want hands in the middle of the bicep where the shaft is looking at the ball or slightly inside. Then at the top, our left arm is matching our shoulder or lead arm is matching our shoulder. Our hands are above our heels. Then as we come back down, we want the shaft to essentially, let's say, go through your belt or 90 degrees to your spine, right? So you see how it's 90 degrees to a spine. And then as it's coming down and you go around, right? We could go through a lot of details with this video, but you can kind of see how his hand path will kind of stay in this tunnel halfway through and then start to work left. Zach would do the same thing. So he comes down, it's 90 degrees then you can see how his hand path would stay in the tunnel, and then at impact, then it works back left. If it's working too left too early, that might be you hitting a little bit of, you know, across the ball or out to end. So those are some things that you could look at from the face-on view, now, or the down-the-line view. What about the face-on view? So the face-on view, what we want to see is we want to draw a line down our trail leg. So if I were to draw a line on his trail leg and then a line on his head, right? We want to have a little initial push with the mass from your left foot or your lead foot to your trail foot. So you can see he has a little push right here into his trail side. And then as he enters the top, you're going to see that there's going to be a little bit of a gap between his hip and that line. So his pressure, his pressure is still on his trail foot, but you can see there's a little golf ball size gap between his trail side and that line. Rory will be, he's hitting a driver, so it's a little bit more pronounced to where he's going to really push into his trail side and then he recenters at the top so that now there's a, once again a little gap. Most amateurs, they will essentially turn and then sway to where the, the, club, the hip essentially will be a little bit more over here. Their back will be inverted, which causes back pain. And you can see how there, both of them have some some bend away from the ball, right? So we always say it's almost like your, your chest is looking down at this, this point. So now they've tilt, turn, and hinged up to the top, and now they're going to laterally shift. So in the downswing, Rory actually shifts more than like anybody. He actually shifts about eight inches in his lateral shift down to where he's shifting his pelvis. So if you watch how much like this black part of his belt will move, it'll move about, like that moves about a foot, right? Zach will do the same thing to where he's shifting forward, right? So he tilt turns and hinges, then he shifts his weight, drives his hands, and Rory does the same thing. He kind of gets to that lead side, so that's where you could draw a line up your lead foot. They shift and drive, and now they pivot, so they open up their hips, and they snap their wrists. So they open up their hips, snap their wrists, and then as they go through, a good picture of good sequencing is that as, and face control, is that as you go through, the shaft basically lines up with your trail arm. So you can see that his shaft lines up with your trail arm. What we see with a lot of amateur golfers is that halfway through, that follow through, the club's gonna be more like this. That's gonna be a lot of flipping going at the bottom because the fact that the hips are just not opening up fast enough when they get to the bottom of the arc. Like right here, Zach and Rory are going whoosh, like right around the corner. So if there's a little bit of a flip there at the bottom, that just could be some speed and rotational speed at the bottom of the arc. But 
those are things that we want to work on after we've made sure that the shaft is shallow and the backswing and all that stuff. We don't want to work on impact if we don't have other things in place first. So that's kind of why we do first things first. And if you, like I said, if you have any questions on how, what to look for, what part of the puzzle you're actually at, that's why we have the Stock Shot Club to where you can send videos and we tell you exactly what part of the puzzle you're work, you should be working on, whether it's your tilt, your turn, your hinge, your shift, your drive, your pivot, your snap, your turn, your match, or your fold. And that's basically the golf swing in 10 words. So um, this is kind of what you should be looking for from both the down the line and the face on. Be sure to film your swing and then now you can actually see what the true judge is saying of what your golf swing is rather than just how it feels, right? Because sometimes, well, most times coming as a player, feelings lie. So we need to make sure that the feeling is the correct feeling. So hopefully this helps and we look forward to seeing your swing and your video inside the Stock Shot Club.